Thank you, Reverend. <clears throat> and just to be clear, I am not the Reverend Patrick Henry. I am his nephew, the lawyer Patrick Henry. And, uh, thank you. <laughs> the Reverend asked me to make brief remarks. However, brevity is not my forte. Nonetheless, I will endeavor to complete that task. Many thanks for inviting me back to Hanover and to Slash Church. Uh, in preparation for my remarks today, I thought of what influences Slash had on my life. And I would like to briefly discuss three ways in which Slash did influence my life. First, as many of you know, I was born in Studley in 1736. And in the next year, 1737, my uncle and namesake, Patrick Henry Sr., became the parson of this church, and my father, Colonel John Henry, was on the vestry. I, of course, attended church with my father, at least for the first 11 years of my life. Thereafter, my time was split between Slash and Colbury. You see, my mother, Sarah, she became enamored with uh, Samuel Davies, one of those religious dissenters that you spoke of, that was Jonesboro. And my mother would often go to Pole Green to listen to the Reverend Davies, and I think there was some tension in the household as to which church the children should attend. So I spent the time between Pole Green and Slash. Both of them aided in my formation as an orator. The Reverend Davies, I must say, was quite a fiery and influential orator. And from him, I, had, I learned how to use effective oratorical techniques. But from my uncle and my namesake, Patrick Henry Sr., I learned the importance of preparation and organization. Now, as was nor the norm at the time, ministers of the Church of England were not known to be as fiery as those religious dissenters. They were more thoughtful in their presentations. And Therefore, from my uncle, I learned the importance of being prepared and being organized whenever one is to give an oratorical presentation. So that is the first lesson or influence I received from this church. The second, let's fast forward to 1763. I was a 27-year-old attorney in Hanover. I'd been practicing law for three years. And I was doing fairly well for a young attorney but I was an obscure country attorney. That changed in December of 1763. See, I was hired to represent a party in a case that later became known as the Parsons Cause. <coughs> Little background information is in order here. In Colonial Virginia, tobacco known as the noxious weed was a money supply, and promissory notes for different amounts of tobacco we used an exchange much in the way cash money is used in exchange. Also in Colonial Virginia, everyone, like it or not, was required to be a member of the Church of England, and landowners were taxed to pay for the salary of the parson of each parish. The House of Burgesses had set the salary of each parson at 16,000 pounds of tobacco per year. Now this system worked fairly well until the 1750s, but in 1758 there was a severe drought and the tobacco crop was a disaster. So naturally, as tobacco became more scarce, the price of tobacco rose. And the House of Burgesses passed an emergency act known as the Two Penny Act, which said that parsons could be paid in cash money instead of in tobacco at the rate of two pence per pound of tobacco. Well, this sounded fine and good to everyone except for the Parsons because, you see, the fair market value of tobacco at the time was six pence per pound, not two pence. So the Parsons, including my uncle, felt that they had been shortchanged. And they sent a delegation to England and convinced King George to overturn the Two Penny Act. And then they proceeded to bring lawsuits throughout Virginia to recover their lost wages. One of the first such lawsuits was brought here in Hanover, not by my uncle, but by his neighboring minister, Reverend John Murray, Murray from Fredericksville Parish in Louisa. But he brought his case here in Hanover. 
I was hired by the tax collectors of the Fredericksville Parish Levies in opposition to Reverend Morey and to defend the tax collectors and in effect to defend the Two Penny Act. And here's where Slash Church comes into this equation. Because many parsons from around the area were expected to attend that trial. In fact, two dozen did attend. And my uncle was expected to attend that trial. But I did not want my uncle to attend. My strategy, you see, was that at that time, Hanover had become a hotbed of religious dissension. And I knew that some of these religious dissenters were going to be on the jury. So my strategy was focused towards those religious dissenters. And in order to convince them of the rightness of my cause, I would have to point out the greed of the Parsons in pursuing this lawsuit. I did not want my uncle to be present. I did not want to have to look at my uncle and call him a greedy man. In fact, I did not know if I could do so. Therefore, I stood outside of the courthouse awaiting the arrival of my uncle's carriage. And when it arrived, I approached and I implored him, Uncle, please do not attend this session. I must say things today that are unbecoming of the Parsons of the Church of England. And I do not wish to insult you. I have too much respect for you. We went back and forth, but finally he granted my request. He turned around his carriage and he left. I was emboldened by his absence. And in his absence, I indeed called the two dozen parsons in attendance rapacious harpies. <laughs> I singled out three of them, I, I said, Oh, sir, you are well known for keeping three dozen fine foxhounds and going hunting three times a week. It must indeed take a great deal of damages to do so. Oh, and the Reverend Mr. Odom from Fredericksburg has a fine shipment of Madeira wine arrived. For you are indeed known for your famed sellers. It must indeed take a great deal of money to keep your cellars renewed. And finally, there was one large gentleman amongst the clergy. And I said, Oh, do not think I don't see you, sir. Indeed, how could I miss you? <laughs> <laughs> For the very bench groans beneath your weight. <laughs> it must indeed take a great deal of money to keep your table renewed. <laughs> My argument was successful. The jury returned a verdict, giving the plaintiff a mere one penny in damages. Effectively, the two penny acts stood as a result of that verdict. Now, here's where Slash Church is important in that development and in my own development. Because were it not for my participation in the Parsons Cause trial, I would probably continue to be an obscure country attorney. The Parsons Cause trial made the name Patrick Henry known throughout Virginia. Folks started clamoring, you must run for office. And in fact, two years later, I was elected to the House of Burgesses. So were it not for the Parsons Cause trial, I would not have been elected to the House of Burgesses. Were I not in the House of Burgesses, I would not be in a position to rail against the Stamp Act. And I would not be in a position years later shout, give me liberty or give me death. And I would not be in a position to serve five terms as your governor. And that all relates back to that date, December 1st, 1763. If my uncle, your reverend, had not acceded to my request to turn his carriage around, I doubt I would have had the courage to attack those parsons as I did. And if I did not attack those parsons as I did, then I suspect the verdict would have been much different. So that is another connection, influence of Slash on my life. And finally, thirdly, as age and frailty have overtaken me, I have these awful pains in my abdominal area. I hearken back to the foundation I received as a young boy in this church. 
I've always had a fondness for the Holy Writ, Word of the Lord, but it's been, it has become my constant companion these days. I now surround myself with the people and the things that are most important. My children, my grandchildren, my time alone reading the Holy Writ and contemplating and conversing with my Lord. I know that my time is drawing short. And I know that I am not a perfect man. And I pray that God may indeed be a merciful God. I recently wrote my will. And after providing for my wife and children and disposing of my property, I wrote the following. This is all the inheritance I can give my dear family. The religion of Christ can give them one which will make them rich indeed. And I thank God for the faith journey on which he has led me, a journey that started within these walls. And I thank you for welcoming me home to Slash. Now to the task at hand of today. Many wonderful clergy have served at Slash, including my uncle. Most of, the, most of those have gone uh, to be with the saints in heaven. But several are here with us or they have sent greetings for this homecoming. The Reverend Richard Klein served here at Slash from 1988. 1988? Pretty recent. <laughs> I'm used to the 1700s. Yes. <laughs> from 1988 to 1995, and is now serving as a, a disciple church in the Williamsburg area. He wrote, What a pleasure it is to congratulate you on your anniversary and to bring greetings from the membership of Olive Branch Christian Church. Since 1729, your church has served as a place of worship and a cornerstone for the community. It has stood on that hill, reminding all who pass by that God's work here on earth continues through the actions and words of each generation of believers. As you celebrate this milestone, I hope you will embrace the abiding truth that we all stand upon the, sh the shoulders of those who have come before us, and that what we do today is important for those who will come after us. Again, congratulations upon such a wonderful day. Blessings, Richard Klein. Reverend Rock Robert Mathis served as pastor here from 1995 to 1996. Is he here today? He is not. He is not. The Reverend Don Richardson served here from 1996 to 2004 and lives in the village of Mechanicsville and makes his church home here at Sledge. Don, would you stand? <laughs> Slash was blessed in 2009 to have the Reverend James Burton as interim pastor. Jim wrote to say that he has warm and fond memories of his time at Slash and was sorry that he was unable to be here today. Among the dearly departed saints who served Slash in ministry are several families that still attend here today. The Reverend George Williams' family is here. Reverend Williams served as minister in the 40s and the 50s. Jeanette Williams and family, would you stand please? Reverend Bob Bohannon served as minister in the 1980s. His wife Jen is here, I believe. So Ooh. behind. Ah. <laughs> and the family of Reverend Pat Logan, who chose to move here to Ashland at his retirement and make a church home here at Slack. Would Madeline Logan and her family stand? We also have several other clergy families among membership of Slash. Reverend Weeks began serving here in 2010. Would Michelle and the Weeks family please stand? <laughs> and among our membership is also a disciple chaplain. Would Reverend Rebecca Highfield and family stand? I also bring greetings from
from the new regional minister of Christian Church, Disciples of Christ in Virginia, the Right Reverend Bill Spangler Dunning, who had a previous engagement today and could not be here. He looks forward to worshiping here at Slash and getting to know all of you and learning more about the mission and ministry of Slash Christian Church, Disciples of Christ. On behalf of the Church of Virginia, he congratulates Slash on its ministry and looks forward to many more years of partnership. And finally, it is my privilege to introduce our guest speaker for today. The Reverend Dr. William E. Blake, Jr. is Professor Emeritus of History at Virginia Commonwealth University. He has served nine different disciple congregations in the Richmond area as a minister over the years. He has been married to Miriam, his lovely bride, for 69 years. Today, he will preach from the Gospel of Luke on slash and slogan. Welcome to Slash, Bill, and thank you for being here today. Will Bill and Miriam please stand? Again, let me thank the members of Slash, all the members, those from the year of my birth in 1736 up until this grand reunion that I am fortunate to attend today. May God continue to shower his blessings upon this church, its ministers, and its congregation. Again, thank you for welcoming me to Hanover and to Slash.